Hello my arty family, guess what we're doing today? It's Fur Friday and we're going to be drawing a snake. Yep, so I said that right, I know it's called Fur Friday and the series is Fur Friday but I did warn you at the beginning of the series that we were going to be doing a little bit more than just fur. So, uh, the previous one would have been on feathers so today I thought we'd mix it up and we will get on and do some snake scales. Now I've decided very, very stupidly to do this at rather a small scale, but it gives you an idea of potentially how quick uh, they can render up depending on the size that you do your pictures. So this particular reference was offered up to us by Emma Herriot. So thank you very much, Emma, for allowing us to use this image. Now, as I've also mentioned in previous, if you're in my Facebook group, I've had a chat with you guys about this and we've decided that we're going to do a bit of a mix up of time lapse as well as real time videos. So this one is going to be real time, as you can tell. And I haven't swatched anything because I'd like you to see my process literally from the beginning to the end. I'll try not to make this too long, but I want you to get the most out of these videos as possible so you feel that when you come to expand your drawing that you're able to actually look at as many different types of animals as possible without feeling intimidated about going forward. So let's get on. So the first thing I'm going to do looking at my reference picture over on my computer to the other side of me is he actually has a very orange undertone. You'll see from the reference and I'm hoping I've got the lighting good enough that we're in a fairly good state that you get a bit of a good idea of where we're at colour wise. So I think the first one that we're going to look at actually using, I'm going to try and do the majority of this with the polychromos as usual um, because it tends to be the pencil that people have the most. Um, for those that are my patrons, you have your colour conversion charts, so feel free to use them if you want to use your polys for any reason. So we're going to be using burnt ochre and we're going to be using this as a wash and I'm going to write the pencils down as we use them. Now, apart from the eye area, which is just here, I am going to shade over everywhere that requires to have an orange hue to it. So we're just going to, if you ever heard me use the term wash, which I think you have, certainly my patrons have, um, this is what I mean by it. So we're just gonna gently go over the top. If there's any areas that need to stay either white or a creamy color, then I will just leave that blank. But other than that, I am going to wash over the whole thing. So this is very much shadow under here, so we can include that. I've put a bit of scotch tape down just to help me keep the edges neat, as I haven't bothered in the previous Fair Fridays, but I thought I would today. Look all professional, eh, while I'm talking to you guys. Um, now on this side, basically what you want to do is not lose your lines underneath. So this is why I'm just doing a light wash at the moment. And then I'm gonna go in with the darker color, which I am probably going to look at actually using Cap of Mortem. But the scales on this section here aren't quite as recognizable as these scales here. So what you don't want to do is lose those lines going forward. I'm doing large ovals and I've got a light amount of pressure. So you can see the difference between what I've done here and you can't see the difference between the top because I'm too zoomed out between the top section here. See what I mean? So you can see how much lighter I'm actually being. So let's bring that out so you can see everything. Once you practice this type of oval motion, you'll find that you're able to do larger areas in a much quicker way without having really strong pencil lines that you can't get rid of once you start colouring over the top. tack under here so I'm just going to eliminate that
Okay, so we're just going to grab my cup of mortem. We already have a nice sharp point on there. And what we're going to do with our cup at mortem is start indicating where our individual scales are. Now on the majority of the top part of his head here, we don't see the entire way around them all. But what we can do is we can pencil them in and then we'll deal with them later on as we go along, which you'll see. So that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pencil them in and I'm going to include these lighter ones down here as well. You've noticed I've not started with the eye. I've tried to actually start with the piece that is probably the most intimidating and that is working on the individual scales. What I might do is on some of these is just time lapse some particular areas where it's very much a rinse and repeat so you're not having to sit there literally watching me draw every single scale I can see because you will soon uh, be driven crazy so if I fast forward a little bit that'll be why so I'm just going to prompt myself in here that this is actually a shadow area and we're going to be just filling that so this is actually part of that body and then we come up here and that's when it gets really dark in there. So a lot of people say that you have to start with your light to your dark, which you, you do in colour pencil, but it doesn't stop you from blocking out your shadow areas. Now his scales are very strange on this side because the way that it curves, you the light isn't hitting on every single scale. So it looks a little bit like a, uh, the only way I can describe it is like a tiled roof. So you can see underneath, and there's quite a lot of shadow underneath, but there's no real lines coming up this way. So when we come to add our shadows, that's when we need to build that up. So it still looks like scales. We want to get those marks in so we don't lose them. Follow exactly the same as, as if you were drawing fur, you would follow the curve of the body. It's got an odd patch there where it doesn't quite sit right and that goes all the way round. That actually comes along that way, like so. So you can almost start uh, see the beginnings of a snake happening here. Now this bit here is a very, very dark section and it's part of the pattern. I don't know whether it's a corn snake. Um, and we're just going to sketch that in. Funny story about a corn snake, in that when I lived in my old flat, coffee man as you know him was in the bathroom and all of a sudden you heard this very manly girly scream and a snake had found its way up the bath overflow as far as we can gather and found its way into our bathroom and was riving around our shampoo bottles so uh, yeah that was fun we thought when we took it because we had a pet shop down near us and we thought actually it escaped from there but it turns out it hadn't and they told us it was an albino corn snake but apparently it wasn't i don't know what the name was now but we actually kept him for a few years because nobody claimed him and the pet shop was charging us to look after him so i thought if you're going to charge us we might as well keep him so we did Yeah, I don't know whether this is a corn snake because the pattern looks slightly different. But So yeah, we're just going to draw in those scales and I'm going to fast forward a bit for you. Now 
Okay, so we have all our scales down, and to be honest, I'm probably actually gonna work a little bit backwards on this drawing. I'm gonna do his eye now, which has a little bit of a yellow hue to it, so I'm actually going to go in with the burnt ochre. And let's get the fact that we've used our Caput Mortem. And we can pop that over the top in there. And then for the eye, he's actually very dark underneath. So I'm going to, it's got a little tiny highlight just there. So I'm going to fill that in with Caput. Then I am going to get my dark sepia because we want to keep the undertones of the black warm. shading around the top of the eye where it starts to get lighter as you come down and we've got a little bit of black showing under here let's pop that in as we did use it even though so far we've only used it in a small area so again we can now i'm going to bring in another color and i want to bring in i think ivory for now and what I'm actually going to no I'm not I am going to use the ivory but I'm just looking at the color underneath and he has a slight grayish hue to him so I'm just going to pop the gray in and then we're going to blend over the top with the ivory and we're going to blend over the top here with the ivory and I'm not concerned about pushing or forcing any of the other color into the zones of the ivory because it has it's not a completely clean look and people worry too much about things having a little bit of a muddy look to them so sometimes it's worth not worrying so we just re-emphasize our shadows with our caput mortem there we know that we've got some very dark ones under here now the shadows aren't all red but they do have a red tone to them which is why i've done the initial ones in the cup of mortem so i'm now going to get a nice sharp point on my dark sepia and then we can go in with our dark sepia and then that is going to give us just the right tone that we need we can strengthen this shadow underneath here and I would layer between the dark sepia and the Caput Mortem to make sure that we keep that orangey red tone. In fact, I'm gonna have a bit of a sweep over with the burnt ochre. Get that all nicely blended. And then the Caput Mortem as we come into the darkest area dark sepia in the absolute darkest area and that gives us that nice shadow and then what I'm going to do is just blend out this lightest area here with the ivory to give us that nice smooth blend and we do have a few bits of detail in here not a huge amount so I'm going to add those in as well Doing this type of drawing can be very tedious, but it's very rewarding as well. And it looks very daunting, but there really is not a lot to it, other than the fact that you're drawing the same thing over and over again. So we've got a little bit of the burnt ochre underneath his mouth area there. And then we want to come back in with the cap mortem to strengthen the scales and a little bit of shadowing under there. And that helps us get that rich red tone back that down a little bit into this area as well and you can see just by doing these little build-ups now that it doesn't take long to render up at all so this is the bit around his eye 
sky that you can see in the reference is quite dark and then we can start darkening those layers now because we've got our dark lines underneath we'll be able to go over the top in the necessary places and blend out in the lighter areas as well so with my ivory which I'm just going to sharpen we are going to soften the blend up in oh, up into the orange area here so where, for example, I've gone a little bit too strong on this line across here, I'm just going to erase some of that out so we get a bit more than this one here. So when we come and blend over the top, we've got a much softer blend into those scales. just want to gently blend in any tone and colour that you see on these areas because not all of them are perfectly um, clear or white or even that ivory so some have got a little bit more detail to them. So I'll grab our cup of Morton and just strengthen some of the most darkest without quite going in with the dark sepia yet. But you can already see how 3D this section is looking and we haven't done a huge amount. So I'm coming in with the dark sepia, but I'm not being heavy handed. Because he's very soft and out of focus in that zone. Um, and I know some of that's the reference because we are zoomed right in. So it, the reference isn't gonna be as clean as it would ordinarily each time we can then come back in and we can strengthen with our burnt ochre we're just doing little backwards and forwards motions inside some of the scales because I want him to have a little bit more texture again because our reference isn't 100% sharp focus and then I'm going to blend over the whole lot with the ivory just going to keep building up. Get the brush, don't blow Venita. Okay. So I'm just looking now where I need to just rich, make that colour a bit rich because when you go over with anything that's lighter than what you're using you desaturate your colour. So we want to put the saturation back in and that's why we end up layering over the top. And this is why layering is so important when it comes to colour pencils because it is a case of going in, adding your hue, desaturate a bit, maybe more saturation, and it's a case of just playing around, blending them up, and then you see as you go along, you know, what needs to be done. Now I think we could probably actually get away with adding a bit of yellow. So I'm thinking the cadmium, and you don't want to go on too strong, so just a little wash over the top in some of those areas that need a bit more of a yellow tone. That's great, that works really, really well. So that is our Cadmium in yellow. And I'm just gonna put Cad yellow. But you can see that it's enough that it just lifts that color and it certainly gives it a bit more interest. And we need some of that down in here. In fact, I think we could wash over the whole area, actually. Let's let's do that. Now it starts to get browner there, and then we've got a little bit in there. Now what we have on these central scales is we have highlights as well as shadows. So when you come to do the highlights, you really need to leave them as negative space. But as we go up to that area, I'll show you exactly what I mean. We've actually got like a bit of a not a dirty patch but it starts to change hue slightly here so I'm just going to wash over very lightly with my dark sepia like so we need to strengthen this patch as well so I'm just going to do that while the pencil's in my hand okay 
base. We've already got a good base going here. So I'm probably just going to flip between the cap at Mortem and the sepia. And to be honest, this bit is probably going to be the hardest part of the entire reference because it's going to be difficult to show this as 3D even though we haven't got each of the scales showing individually like we have on this side. This is part of the reason why I chose this particular section because I want to be able to show you that you don't need to show every single scale but to be able to give it the same uh, 3D effect and still know what it is. The brain is very very clever at forming information so all you have to do is indicate something and you know from experience and from seeing it before that actually that is what you're looking at so it's it's very clever the brain's very clever to do that we're lucky to have our brains So at the moment you're probably thinking it's really really dark and harsh and it's all these building sections that can take the time and a lot of people don't believe that there is an ugly stage when it comes to drawing in colour pencil and this is your evidence this is one of those ugly stages they do exist so don't think they don't and don't think you'll ever get away with it either. little individual lines because you can't see them all but you can still see some I'm not being precise to the reference I'm not being exact um, my eyes would probably start rolling in the back of my head if I tried to draw them all literally as they are so we're just indicating at this stage so say it's very much like tiling on a roof that's what it reminds me of We're just slightly angling now some of the shadow lines as we come up because you can see a little bit more detail as you come up onto the snake's body where you can see a tiny bit more of the scaling. down here you're they're, they're near enough lines actually there isn't really much detail at all you could almost do a checkerboard as such just not till you come down to this bit um, and then again it's just little tiny flick ups into the area um, because it's not a completely formed scale that you're you're visually able to see so I guess it's in your mind trying to work out exactly what you're happy to emit and what you're happy to draw because at the end of the day it is artistic license and you you know you might not be one who wants to sit there and draw every single tiny bit of detail you might want to do it I don't know a bit more abstract is entirely up to you but this is a really good base for you to start now we are going to blend over the whole lot with the ivory and I'm not going to worry about where it smushes or where it blends into we're just going to go over the whole thing Now at the moment it's very flat because we don't have any contrast between really our darks and our lights. We currently only have those very dark lines but I guarantee you once we get to this and this, this will make much more sense. So we're now going to bring back some of that colour and we're going to add our burnt ochre. grubby patch down here where it gets darker it's not grubby I think it's just detail on his scales but it looks much darker and we've almost got some just swapping to the grey the dark sepia apologies and again a very light blend over the top it seems very dark through my camera at the moment um, and we just want to darken up this little patch down here in little spots and areas make 
paste bit here curve out like it does in the reference. So we're just going to get some dark sepia down. Then we're going to go in a little bit with our cup of mortem and that brings that hue back helps us to just alter that colour slightly and then we're going in with the burnt ochre. And again adding these different colours, adding these darks, these light colours is what's going to give us the contrast and the illusion of the roundness of him and the shaping and the scaling. Blending out again with the ivory. Again, the ivory just helps to desaturate a little bit where it needs to be. Not everywhere needs to be desaturated. It's a good way to help you in certain areas. So we, we get stronger in this scaling as we come up into this area. So I'm just going to strengthen these a bit. We don't need to do a lot because some of them are only indicated on one side. And what I'll do in a minute is I shall purposely stop doing this side and I shall carry on so we can make sure that we blend the two together quite happily without going too extreme. So we'll come over to this section now and we are going to look at doing these individually. I think these are the only ones really that we need to concentrate on because we have got those lights in between our darks so we need to make sure that we do get these down. going to work on these individually so we're not just going to leave them like this okay so that gives us the base to work on on this particular side and then ideally what we need to do is start looking at darkening where this uh, pattern is on his scale because you lose any definition of scale where this is so I'm just going to do this by using the cup of Morton but we are more than likely probably going to bring the I would imagine the Van Dyke Brown but we'll just do this and then I shall work it out I don't always swatch before I do a drawing sometimes I'll swatch as I go I think the more and more you do these the better understanding you have of the types of colors that you end up reaching for on a good portion of your portrait uh, to be honest a lot of the times you can go from an animal to a person and not actually change the colors that you're using so they can be very very similar on a regular basis so uh, yeah you get familiar very quickly with the ones that you need the most I'm envisaging the Van Dyke Brown. Oh no, let's go with, okay, Walnut Brown. Walnut Brown. Let me get a nice sharp point. That's a good choice there. So we've got a good colour in there and I think we're going to use the grey to blend out. In fact I didn't write the grey down did I? Um, so this is cold grey three that we'll be doing the blend out for this particular area on his body. with I'm just wondering if it will work nicely in some of these and it will actually so yeah I will look at adding some of them in I think 
so where some of them need strengthening here but you know i said i'd come back later and do these this, this actually would be quite a nice pencil to do that with so i will probably look at doing exactly that so let's not get distracted because that is exactly how i <laughs> generally work so um maybe that's not a bad thing that you see how distracted i do get and i end up going in various locations and end up all over the place. It's just how it is. I'm just doing a little sort of rough patch here and there because there are some where it comes out and it's identifying again where those individual scales are. Sort of blends in over to this orange section so I'll do a little bit of wiggle motion for lack of a technical term um, and it tends to just softly bring it into that zone without it being a really harsh transition so we can Whoop to our burnt ochre. Just strengthen and blend in that particular area. And out up into this section as well. finding some of the scales up here there's not much in the way of definition but we do want to get the old one or two defined and this one's a very strong brown scale So we're just going to blend it over again and just strengthen where it needs to be strengthened. I think we could probably shade out a little bit on this side as well. Again, there's hardly any scale definition on that left hand side, so we haven't got to worry too much. I'm now going to come in with that grey and just blend that out a little bit, and then we know how far we can reach out with that dark side part of it. That made no sense whatsoever, Vanita. But it did in my head. And it, I know, Safi, I don't know if you heard that. Um, so it's not always the easiest thing to try and translate, but we're getting there. So I'm just picking out patches as we see them as well. This tends to be how I work. If I spot something, I need to go and adjust or arrange or draw it because sometimes I'll forget and then I won't go back and adjust that area and then I get frustrated because I go, oh, I didn't finish it. Um, and sometimes missing that particular section can be a vital component to your drawing looking finished. So don't be afraid to skip back and forth into various areas of your drawing. It's not a problem. It's always around underneath so it's following where that light source that light source seems to be coming down in this direction which is why all the shadow is underneath so really observe where your light source is coming from whenever you do a dog a cat a snake a person it doesn't matter even objects light source is very very important when you're looking at doing these studies now I'm purposely colouring the whole range because I want to show you what you can do with the slice tool. Now those of you that have followed me for a while are familiar with this slice tool but those who may be new to this video may be new to me first of all I would love it if you could give me a thumbs up if you are enjoying the video so far. Make sure your friends and family if they are interested can come and see it and yeah the slice tool is a knife that if you use it in a certain way is extremely good for removing colour of colour pencils. So I'll show you what I mean in a moment once we get some more 
tone and things happening color on this side here so I'm just glazing over again this area I think we could probably do with a bit more hue in this area as well That way it leaves this bit which is much higher up and where the light is hitting. So we've got a few scales lost down here which are fairly strong and to be honest I'm not sure I want them as strong on here. Um, it can look very odd when you're drawing in small sections like this. Um, so sometimes when you do the fur tutorials they look very very strange. But I promise you once you start building up and building up and then you look at what you're doing it can um, it, well, it starts to make sense. Okay, I'm swapping and just blending this out again, just adding a little bit more value to that area. Now I don't want to go too dark on this side so at the minute I'm just going to wash over again with the burnt ochre and on the top left hand side of literally where I have just drawn I'm going to put a small amount of yellow. The cadmium yellow is a very very pigmented strong colour so you don't need to be pushing down very hard. And then what we want is a much lighter version of this side. So we're now going to blend over completely with the ivory. And you'll see how much lighter that makes it now just by doing that blend out. It looks beautiful it's almost like a, um, a burnt effect I really really love that effect that's that's going on here and we've got a bit not of an imperfection but the scale comes in a little bit on this side it's not quite as straight up and the same down here so we just need to accentuate some of that So I think we can probably, I think we can actually swap over to the cup of mortem on this side. I just give a very light wash again over into some of these areas. You've got a bit of grubbiness in here. I'm not gonna, I'm just indicating very lightly because I want to get the scales in first. If I indicate now, it will remind me that that's what I need to do in that location. So this slice tool is a like a craft knife, I suppose. It's got a rounded, um, it's got a rounded tip on there, so it's not a very pointy tip. It is very sharp, so be careful. But when we use it, we hold it this way. We hold it opposite, so the blade points upwards from your artwork. So. We use it that way so the blade is pointing this way not towards the artwork so we always use it upside down so i've zoomed you in as far as i can for the moment to let you get a good view of where i'm starting to lift that color now this will only work if you have enough layers of pencil down otherwise you end up just damaging your paper. But it gives you some very nice, clean, highlighted lines. If 
you could leave it as negative space if you wanted to and you can do this with a scalpel you just have to again make sure your scalpel is upside down and just be very very careful So again, it's a helpful indicator because you're showing where the light is hitting. And it really helps define where these scales are sat in this dark zone. So once you've got enough of the highlight showing, you can then happily go in and just strengthen next to those any color that you might need to. Because sometimes if your highlights aren't showing, it's not because you haven't got light enough because you physically can't, it's because you haven't gone dark enough. stronger they are now we're going in and we're just strengthening that dark color there I'm pretty happy with that. As I say, I'm not going to be absolutely 100% precise to the reference picture. Again, that is your decision if that's what you want to do. But sometimes you just have to make the executive's decision about just how much information you are going to get down. So all I'm doing at the minute is just popping in the edges of each of the scales where the bottoms meet the next section. And that's because at the moment, really on this reference, that is where your darkest point is. So if I get them in, then I can just lightly draw round them and uh, I can then just keep an eye on just how dark I'm going. So for example, these are actually fairly light as we come round this side, but actually as we come round here, they get much darker. So we can just apply a little bit more pressure and then we can just have them more visible with our shadow so that's what we're going to be looking at doing so again around this side is much lighter so we're just going to have a little bit of lighter pressure but again even though they're lighter there are little sections just in here where they join up where actually it is darker so just really observing your reference picture and choosing which you want to keep in which you don't and all that jazz We've lost some of the shape of the scales down this side. I think that's because we've got a little bit of dark and we've got a little bit of light. So sometimes that can give the illusion that the shape isn't quite what we're looking at. So I'm just gonna re bring some of that back. I'm just going to now blend in where I said those dirty patches were. I'm just again very loosely picking out some of where the darkest bits are and then just glazing over where it's just not grubby looking I suppose but where he's got a little bit of a change in his scales. I 
I think at this scale, it's easy to lose the shape of them. Scale, pun, get that? <laughs> um, bad joke, sorry. Um, yeah, at this scale, it's actually hard to keep the shape of the scales. Um, but I think as a general rule, uh, they are a bit squiff and I'm certainly not going to say they're perfect because they are far from it. But you can still see what you're drawing, you can still indicate that it is a snake and at a much larger scale or even just that much of a larger scale, you would have had the ability to get far more sort of definition in there without going stir crazy. So I'm going to blend over again with the ivory. I do have plans to do a snake on a lot much larger scale. I've had an image saved for absolutely months, in fact, probably almost almost a year, um, but haven't got around to doing it. So I will do that, I promise. Um, it was a beautiful snake, so it'd be nice to get that done. I want to add a bit more of the colour back in, so I'm just going to go over very lightly with the burnt ochre. Not in many places, but just enough. And I'm going to go in with the dark sepia purely because I don't want much more brown added in this area. I'd rather it was more on the greyer side rather than on the brown side. And dark sepia is a real nice mix between the two. of those scales so we're just going to add that in accentuated a bit more, a little bit of grubbiness is the best way to describe it, so apologies for I'm not insulting your snake, I promise. Um, he's just got a little bit here and there on each of the individual scales, so that's what I'm looking at. He, um, he looks very different through my phone, um, as that's where I'm looking at the reference now, compared to my computer, so I don't know how well this is going to translate through my monitor and my recording equipment, but hopefully it's okay. I'm going to go in with the dark sepia down here now. Again, I'm getting all the shadows where I want them, making some a little bit stronger. They may not be this strong on the reference, but this is again where I come in with my artistic license. And those of you that, or people in general, that feel that artists only ever copy, this is actually stages where we don't and we start to really bring in our own little individual elements that we want to bring in just to accentuate or make it a bit stronger whatever you want to do really, it's entirely up to you because it's your drawing. So 
So in total so far, this has only taken 57 minutes. So although I said I would time lapse earlier, I'm not going to because actually this isn't bad going for an hour. Now I didn't want to be on this massive intensive realism course because it's going to put people off and I didn't want to do that. I wanted you to enjoy doing these in your own pace. Um, at the moment, the reference photos aren't available that I'm using because they have been kindly donated by my subscribers and by my likers on my Facebook page. So of course, all you're doing is taking forward what you have learned today and applying it to a reference photo you can find. If you would like to find out where you can get free reference photos from, I will pop a couple of links in the description below for you. Let me know what you think of this tutorial. Did you enjoy it real time or would you prefer to go back to time lapse? let me know i'm more than happy to cater for whatever the majority might be but i hope you do enjoy this don't forget to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit to the notification button so you can get notified every friday when the first fridays come out i go live every wednesday um, have a good afternoon evening whichever it may be while you're watching this and i shall see you on the other side bye